when you see some of these crossover fights, obviously I know that you and Jake Paul have, have had your disagreements. Um, do you think that Jake's gotten better? As a boxer? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, and, and listen, what, what Jake Paul has accomplished is he's fighting old guys. Yes. He's fighting, all he fights are old guys and whatever. But listen, say what you want, he wins. And and he makes money. So he's doing his thing, you know. Right. Um, you, you just don't see it as a sustainable thing. Hmm. He fought Tommy Fury and lost. Where's that rematch? Ooh, 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 ooh. Where's that rematch? <laughs> So, I don't, so I don't he, know so where it's at. I know he he's loses. fighting. He's fighting a 57-year-old champ now. What's 58. your 58? 58. Yeah, yeah. Don't want to take a year away from you, Mike. He's, he's fighting a guy that's almost 60 years old, and, and you know what I mean. I mean that says it all. I... That says it all. There's nothing else that needs to be said. Um, I... That's that's his shtick. That's his thing. He fights guys that are that are that are old, usually undersized guys, older, undersized guys. Hey. Um, but he's fighting Tyson here, and and. Him and Tyson are going to make a shitload of money. A bunch of money. And and, and good for both of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good for both of them. Like I say, Jake Paul can fight. It's not like Jake Paul can't fight. Yeah. Jake Paul just won't fight anybody. Mmm. Y'all hear that? <laughs> That's the response to what Dana White just said because he is highlighting what we all saw and what we all knew we were going to see and dreadfully actually saw. It was a battle of like versus love versus respect. If you look at the business, the spectacle of Jake Paul fighting Mike Tyson. Iron Mike Tyson, the baddest man on the planet. God dang it. Ah, ain't nothing worse than when you walk right into the trap, get trapped, and then be blaming the trap. <laughs> like the trap, like, dog, I've been here. You knew what this was going to be. Just like how WWE took wrestling and said, we going to make it this. And for me, it's WWF. Remember that growing up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, brother. All that. And you were like, no, oh, this is based on wrestling. This is real. And then you squint it and you said, oh, it's not fake. It's just well orchestrated. Hmm. Then the same thing has now happened to boxing. Now, we saw Thunderlips going out there with Rocky. Hey, I thought this was supposed to be an exhibition. <laughs> hey, yo, hey, why you hit me so hard, man? <laughs> yo, you you kind of big, you know? Remember that? And that turned into, like, that was like 40 years ago. We've arrived. Floyd Mayweather was whispering to y'all, trying to tell you, man, I'm in Dubai. Man, I'm in China. Man, I'm in Japan. Man, I'm out here beating up on people that I don't even know. And getting paid, young homie, getting paid. Now we here. It is full throttle. The WWE, whatever they're going to call it, MVP, yeah, MVP promotions, right, has now taken boxing just like WWF and WWE took wrestling. God dang, what happened to our sport? <laughs> boxing did it to itself, though. Let's not blame these guys. Boxing did it to itself because boxing couldn't get right with all the belts, and we knew that there was a right opening there was a prime opportunity for somebody to come in there and go get this well they don't got it and it's a wrap and now we got to see stuff like this look at this in promotion y'all ready to laugh let's go y'all remember this crawl up to him step on his foot what the <laughs> right what the hell now if you really look at this i thought this was fake that ain't fake look at the points all right one he came up there with the gorilla wall okay but dog Finish it. Land it. Stick the landing. You stuck it on my foot, fool. <laughs> Mike ain't got no shoes on. Wop, wop. Now watch Mike. This is quick. We ain't, we ain't see this in the fight. Back. Damn. <laughs> he a DN. This is what they teach you as a DN. It ain't your move. It's the, the move after the move to make sure he can't move back and recover. So it ain't a, just a rip. It's the rip and the turn. You got to lean on him. You just do a rip, you done. He going to push back. You got to rip, lean on him. You do a spin move. It ain't just a swipe or a spin move. You turn. You got to slap him in the back so he can't recover. Watch Mike one more time. Mike going to slap that boy and then put his hand down. Wow. <laughs> oh, we saw eight rounds, 16 minutes of none of this. <laughs> what the hell, right? So, the thing about Mike Tyson and this whole journey that really got us all caught up and why we're all so saddened by his loss 
is because it was a deadly reminder to our own mortality. Yep. Everybody's sitting there like, this sucker, the baddest man on the planet. I don't care he's 58. He could beat a dude half his age that is not even a tenth of him as a boxer. can he? And then you realize you can't. All y'all parents out there, raise your hand. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The times I now go outside and I warm these hips up and I put on some of my highlight tapes so MJ can see me, then I turn the tape off. I said, now, let's race. And the race is getting shorter and shorter every year. <laughs> We're running three-yard dashes now. I'm trying to get two steps in and get them. <laughs> Y'all know what it is. That boy, nine years old. That boy, one-fifth of me. <laughs> right? Not even that. And I'm like, sit, go. Oh, 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 everything just broke. Everything just breaks, right? So now I'm in legacy because I know I can't leave him in the dust no more. I got to leave stuff for him. <laughs> it's legacy. Might start talking legacy too. Uh-oh. Well, in your return to the ring for this fight, you are setting a monumental opportunity for kids my age to see the legend Mike Tyson in the ring for the first time. What type of All right, first of all, I love this little girl. Her voice, she professional, talking with the hands. That's what all the professionals do. Go, go, go. Only thing that's funny is I know she's going to be a reporter, not necessarily an athlete probably. Look how her feet are like one way and her body the other way. Fresh Fendi, though. Get it, girl. <laughs> She all plain. She is off plain. What type of legacy would you like to leave behind when it's all said and done? Well, I don't know. I don't believe in the word legacy. I just think that's another word for ego. That's just some word everybody grabbed on to. Now it's used every five seconds. It means absolutely nothing to me. I'm just passing through. I'm going to die, and it's going to be over. Who cares about a legacy after that? That look. <laughs> that's the second one. The first one he gave her, she was like, what just happened? Now, Remember, she's just getting started. Got to be. She's too young. What's she going to do now? What a, what a big ego. So I'm going to die. I want people to think that I'm this. I'm great. I'm No, we're nothing. We're just dead. We're dust. We're absolutely nothing. Our legacy is nothing. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That is something that I have not heard before. Someone say that as an answer. Can you really imagine somebody say, I want my legacy to be this way when I get dead? You think somebody really wants to think about you? I want people to think about me when I'm gone. Who the fuck cares about me when I'm gone? <laughs> well, <and you're> <laughs> oh, that Fendi was crying. Oh, it's starting to wrinkle up. She didn't know what to do. And good for her. She kept it composed. Damn. In all my years of doing this, I ain't never had a U-turn response like that. Golly, right? So then, we're all pumped. We're all excited. This is all the pre- Pre-fight, you know, they got to have some madness. They got to have the slap. They got to have crazy interviews. They got to have stuff where cats are just popping off and showing that they the ones like this. You're like, what is happening here? This is hilarious. I'm what shaking do? hands. You said, Mike, how much you want to bet? He said he's good. That's what I thought. Bitch made. How much? As much as you're willing to lose, brother. More than one million. I'll okay, give you. Okay, deal. A deal. How much you want to bet? How much you want to lose? Oh, these dudes are losing a million dollars of a... Bro, you, I, I, but the time I spent taking a shit is how much you make in your whole life, buddy. Oh, that's the fuck up. How much you want to lose? Whatever, whatever. A million dollars, deal. We got one million here, one million here. Yeah, okay. just Come on, real. put your money where your mouth is. How much money? Exactly. How much money? I didn't speak English. Exactly. <laughs> how much money? A ring, deal. Let's go. A ring? I'm, I'm following up on all this shit. A million? A million? 20 bucks right here. Smart guy. That's what I thought. Do you want to bet your purse? Yeah, let's bet the purse. <laughs> oh, Deal. Dear. Well played. Well played. And I'm sending out contracts, too. The stakes have just been raised. I'm oh, my God. Okay. First of all, I hope none of those are real. <laughs> I hope this whole thing was staged, just like the real fight. But we'll get to that. Um, but, boy, that boy out there taking these people money. See, the ego, like Mike said, the ego will make you in that moment realize, oh, I shouldn't have said that. You got Mike Tyson right there. Knowing that this fight, this is the first time I really was like, okay, there's a script. Now, I didn't have no proof. I had no evidence. But I was like, it ain't because Jake Paul can't afford to lose, what, $8 million to these cats and lose to Mike Tyson. It's the fact that, he is stepping out so far against the baddest man on the planet who 
by training videos look like he could do something still enough. Like the gap between what you have accomplished in the sport and what he's accomplished, you're like, he's coming down, I'm coming up, but it's still a gap. And then you watching the videos, he's still looking blurry. I was like, yeah, it's a script. And then I got into the fight, like all of us sitting there eating your popcorn, lemon heads, ready to go to war. And you see stuff like this and you realize, oh, it was a script. It was a script. Let's go. Land this jab right there that really that. knocked Jake back. Land this jab right there that really knocked Jake Let's back. Go. I'm going to show you one more time. Land this jab right there that. You see why? Everybody going to say, yeah, because he hit him. Nope. Nope. The reason why I know that this fight mm-hmm, has some clauses in it that, uh, let us know who was going to be victorious. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. <laughs> I think you're supposed to say that on YouTube when you're BSing. Um, is because Mike Tyson didn't close that gap. Watch it again. What did I tell you about when you do the rip move? It ain't the rip move that gets it. It's the lean. What did I tell you about a spin move? It ain't the spin. It's the slap on the back so this sucker don't recover. You going to get a good jab off and not follow it with a wah, 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 wah. Trying to funk him up. Watch this again. Not only did he not follow up and close the gap, he opened it. He widened it. <laughs> you ever need evidence? Come here. That's the evidence. So I'm like, oh, Mike figured out right there in that moment, I better slow down before, you know, them clauses kick in. Like in football, sucker be having need he need two more yards for a thousand yards so he get a hundred thousand dollars. Guess what happened? Oh, he gonna be stuck in nine ninety eight. <laughs> Coach be like, nah, dog, we don't need to run a game right now like we used to. <laughs> You're like, what? So, follow me on this journey because it's gonna be hilarious. This is how the fight ends, out of respect, which I respect too, right? <laughs> All right, I got to get that love. I got to get that love, right? They like, look, we don't got all y'all for all this. <laughs> At least can we show you, like, being real, like, if it was the last 10 seconds of any fight, would you ever, ever, ever be like, <laughs> like, you know, I know in the beginning you do that, but if I'm trying to really win, and Mike knowing he losing right now, like, I mean, you stop playing. I mean, he was biting that damn glove the whole time. He's like, I'm about to kill this motherfucker. <laughs> he couldn't do it. So Mike knowing he's losing, and Mike let him go out like that, I ain't mad because that means they knew what this was about. First and foremost, Mike Tyson, it's such an honor. Let's give it up for Mike, bro. This is He's a legend. He's the greatest to ever do it. He's the GOAT. I look up to him. I'm inspired by him, and we wouldn't be here today without him. This man is an icon, and it's just an honor to be able to fight him. And he's obviously the toughest, baddest man on the planet, so it was it was really tough like, like I expected it to be. First and foremost. All right, all right. See, all right, now we all got the flowers out. Everybody giving Mike his flowers while he's still alive. And even Mike had to talk to it. Mike was like, look, y'all over here set tripping like I went in there to try to kill this dude. Well, Mike is still going with the narrative to a point. Well, like, I, I actually tried. However, keep perspective. Be real. Because he reveals the shocking reason for his lopsided loss to Jake Paul. You want to know? Ooh, didn't know. Ooh. Ugh, making Mike eat that, eat that, take that, take that. Well, here's the reason. Mike Tyson looked old, and yes, he did. His loss to Jake Paul on Friday night. After all, he's 58. Mm, Jake Paul... Younger than him, and Mike ain't been in the ring in 20 years. But Mike had a different explanation of why he was disappointing and looking old. This is one of those situations when you lost but still won. I'm grateful for last night. No regrets to get in the ring one last time. I almost died in June. Had eight blood transfusions. Lost half my blood. Could, and 25 pounds in hospital and had to fight to get healthy to fight. So I won. Had my children see me stand toe-to-toe. Finished eight rounds with a talented fighter half my age in front of a packed stadium. It's an experience that no man has the right to ask for. Thank you. Y'all buying that? Right? 
I'm not, um, but it's okay. Mike Tyson said it. And, you know, I've encountered Mike Tyson many a times. Mike Tyson's been on my show several times. Mike Tyson and I have had altercations and encounters, <laughs> even on the show, like right for real. Like, I, I don't know where it is. I didn't even want to put myself and insert myself in this conversation like that. But Mike Tyson got hot at me one time on the show. I was like, and? <laughs> what you going to do, hit me so I get paid? No, you're not. All uh, right, nah. Uh, but the point is, Mike is bringing up the reasons that he gave a lackluster performance, which is a good, it's a good excuse, even though it's still an excuse. When I coach, I tell the kids every time we get out there, first thing we do before even jumping jacks, before we even do high knees, I'm like, all right, describe what you're feeling, describe the elements, go. Sunny, windy, dry, wet, mm, tired, hungry. All right, then I say, all right, get it, put it all in the bag, let's tie this bag up. Now, Anything in this bag, we ain't going in there for a reason or excuse. We ain't going in that bag. So everything that's in there that you just said, that can't be an excuse. We ain't going in that bag. Now, let's go out here and go get it. Like Tyson, going through all of that, obviously is affected. Kind of like Noah Lyles when he was talking about, hey, man, I caught COVID and got third in the 200. We didn't really buy that even though we bought it. But we, it just, it just creates enough reasonable doubt for you like, mm, Maybe, 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 maybe. Because maybe if he didn't have those transfusions, maybe if all that didn't happen, maybe some of this would have happened. You think? You hear the sound of that? Sound of No, no. Notice one thing. He closing the gap. Forget the punches. Forget the speed. I'm giving y'all real professional technicalities of the situations. Watch him close this gap every time. Why he ain't close the gap in the fight? Uh-oh. Hey, bro. Nice yeah. one, See? Nice All right, lean. One, you got to lean. Come, 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 come in here. Uh-uh, uh-uh. When I'm bringing you pain. Come on, come on. When I'm bringing you pain, I'm, I'm in it. Mother. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the evidence you need to know that this thing was, you know, that thing. But I don't care because I watch WWE. I don't care. I watch WWF even after I figured out and found out it wasn't necessarily real. It was well orchestrated. But I will admit, it took something off it. It took something off it. Y'all seen the rules for this fight, bro? This is clearly red. Look at this. So first of all, Mike Tyson's gonna get paid more money to lose than to win. Secondly, he is penalized for knocking out Jake Paul in the first round. And he's only gonna get paid a little bit of money if he knocks him out in his second round. So to make the most money, he has to survive all eight rounds while avoiding knocking Jake out. And on top of that, it has to go to decision but the problem is Jake Paul chose the judges. This is crazy red, bro. If I'm Mike Tyson, I don't give I'm going to just knock him out anyway. Please, just do it. <laughs> okay, okay. Y'all see I had to the have rules? Somebody, oh, shut, shut up. You, you, we saw the rules. And stuff. I had to show y'all that, and I had to give it to you in a way where we laid it down brick by brick. Because I don't like when people say, oh, it's fake, it's fake. Why? Oh, Remember I told you I had those conversations with MJ. I don't like Donald Trump. I was like, why? <laughs> you ain't got no reason you gotta just say it you know what I mean so now they gave each other flowers recap of the fight I ain't gonna bore y'all with all that stuff I'm just gonna tell you what I really 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 think in summation I know my heart sank when I saw Mike Tyson looking oh not so much losing I thought he was gonna lose like if he don't knock that fool out in the first round by trying to knock him out which he could have easily um it's a wrap it's rigged slash it's going to go all the way. Okay. I ain't tripping. But I did die a little bit because I'm like, I grew up watching that guy be the baddest dude ever. And now I see him. Forget the money chase and all that stuff. I love that. Go get your bread, boo-boo. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, if I, if I got a really broadcast and then I got a fake broadcast like I've done on, like, Ballers, oh, well, what's the difference? That's fake broadcasting. No, hey, The Rock, you know, pay me. If you pay me more, oh, well. Well, you're not a real broadcaster anymore. So, that's your thoughts. I'm not mad at that lane for Mike. I'm mad at this lane because it hurts me because I'm selfish because I got an ego, like Mike said. <sighs> this father time conversation. <laughs> Mike just reminded me and reminded us. 
I don't care who you are. When you see like an old school legend, you see them cats just walking by and they limping. They got the cane. They got the wheelchair. You see Mike Tyson barely can stand up. You can see Mike Tyson throwing punches and stumbling. You're like, damn. Him? Him too? Me too. I race MJ and I know that boy, he fast, but boy, am I slow. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. Oh, man, it hurt to see Mike go out like that. I ain't going out, but he went out like that. So make sure you guys go out by logging on to projecttransition.org. Uh-oh, rap time, freestyle time. Oh, man, make sure you go here like Lindsey Richards, Richards did and made a one-time $500. Oh, Am I all right? $250. Look at me. Like, I'm ungrateful. That's $250. Thank you, Lindsay. You gave to Project Transition. Make sure you guys log on to Project Transition right here. Yeah. And if you become a gym member, give her every month. And there are a lot of you guys, and they continue to come. See how big that is? Give her every month right here. I want you guys to get this book, Signed, Sealed, and Delivered. Never shut up. Okay. So look at me over here producing. All right, I know what y'all waiting on. <laughs> y'all ready for me to flow? I know y'all ready for the flow. Let's go get this thing. Let's go get this thing. Come on. Right. Boy, I can tell you what I didn't like. What? Was that really Iron Mike? Man, he should have stayed at home. Boy, he used to fight like he was in Rome. Now, there's some dust on that chrome. I'm telling you, boy, he ain't in the zone. One leg worked, the other one tried. And some of me died because Mike Lee looked fried. <laughs> and somebody lied that said that fight was real. Because if it was real, Mike would have killed. <laughs> hey, go Wiley. Hey, that was like top 10, but it was 10. I hate when somebody say it's top 10, it's really 10. Like, you know, no, it was 10, not top 10. Love for you guys, man. Having to make the dick go that thing with the boy. What's up, y'all? It's Marcellus Wiley, founder of Project Transition and proud gym member. I'm excited to share with you an opportunity that will support our kids on their mission to making their dreams a reality. At Project Transition, we believe that real change comes from consistent action and support. That's why we invite you to join our powerful gym membership program that is making a difference every single day. As a gym partner, by giving every month, you'll fuel our mission by providing monthly support that turns into real empowerment and education for underserved youth. Your commitment reduces school dropouts, nurtures communities, and funds impactful programs like the Rising Stars Academy that we share. Together, we can turn potential into prosperity. Join the group of community champions driving change. Your contributions will help aid success by providing essential educational resources, building critical life skills, and fostering community strength. There's no better feeling than knowing your support will ignite hope, foster dreams, and empower the next generation. Join us today and be a part of transformative change. Help our youth become greater than their greatest excuse. Become a gym partner. Thank you.